What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. And today we're gonna go over a new V60 recipe that I've been working on that I think you're going to love. All right, so before we hop into it, I would ask that you hit the subscribe button, the like button, maybe leave a comment saying, I love coffee, uh, that would be fun. And um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So uh, with my first V60 recipe that I posted, it was kind of geared towards a higher extraction, okay? So I was really pushing for those higher extractions that you don't really get in a lot of the V60 recipes that float around. So I was pushing for like higher agitation, ensuring flat beds, longer brew times, multiple pours and things like that. For this one, I'm gonna take a different approach because I know a lot of you don't care as much about getting that high sweetness um, and really full extraction out. Instead, you really are looking for vibrancy and cleanliness and, and uh, th those fruit notes to really sing. So today, this recipe is gonna more so hit on that. And on top of that, it is going to be more accessible to more people regardless of your grinder quality. With that first one, if you have kind of a lower quality grinder, it's not gonna work super well because of how much agitation there was. And so with that one, if you have one that spits out a lot of fines, you may not be getting really great cups. This one though will work well with any grinder because what we're doing during the brew is we are getting fines to trap against the filter. So. I know that sounds confusing. We're gonna discuss it as we go on, but all you need for this brew is some sort of conical brewing device. It doesn't really matter which one. You just want one that has nice ribs on the side because those ribs are going to be what catch the fines, okay? So with these three brewers, in case you're wondering, this is the Kafek Flower, which is what I'll be using for the video today. This one is the Brewista Tornado. If you're not down for plastic, because uh, I know a lot of you are not, and that's absolutely valid. Who knows what's happening when you put hot water in plastic. Um, this one is glass, but it's double walled. So it insulates just as good as plastic. And I'm gonna put a link down below that shows this through uh, some um, uh, a little white paper down below. So the Brewista Tornado, a double walled plastic. And then we have a plastic V60, which is, of course, the goat. Um, so I'm going to be using the flower. I've been having a lot of fun with it. It has wider ridges. Um, but yeah, what we're going to do is simply this. Whatever recipe you're wanting to use, the idea is to use as much of the filter as possible, meaning we're going to fill it up at, with, our, with one of our pores all the way to the top. And the idea is, as it's draining down, we're gonna use centrifugal force by doing a slight stir. And when I say stir, I'm not talking about this down deep. It's gonna be a very slight topical stir in order to use that force to shove fines into the walls being caught on those ribs, on those ridges on the side, okay? So this way, if you have uh, you know, a, a grinder that spits out a lot of fines, you'll probably have a thick, muddy wall caked up against this filter, which will remove it from continuing the last bit of extraction. So we're gonna do that. The way that we do it is whatever recipe you take, the first pour will be triple, triple, triple your, your coffee dose. And why triple, you ask? Well, it's very simple. When you pour your bloom, water inevitably falls through. If that water's falling through, that means it's not being absorbed into the coffee grounds, which means that some of those coffee grounds are not being fully saturated which we need them fully saturated to not only degas, but we need water to penetrate the innermost part of that ground so diffusion can be as efficient as possible. Now, Jonathan Gagne has shown in his book, I'll put a link to that below, that it takes up to two minutes for full saturation of these grounds. And he had noticed a trend of higher extractions when he was allowing a bloom to occur for up to about two minutes with a certain particle size. Now with the particle size here, I'm gonna also advocate for that two minute bloom. I too have seen higher extractions between a 30 second bloom, a one minute bloom, and a two minute bloom. And so we're gonna do a two minute bloom and then just one extra pour. So we're doing triple your dose for the first pour, all right? And then we're gonna wait till the two minute mark and then we're gonna pour the rest of the water in one pour. All right, now the way we're gonna do it is a little specific, so we'll need to pay attention here. I'm gonna go ahead and say it, and then I'm gonna show you with actual brew. So with the bloom, what I like to do is I pour from a height so that the stream breaks before hitting the bed. The reason I do this is because I want it, I don't want the water to immediately go through to the, to the receptacle. I want to pour right above it, breaking right above the bed so that it kind of splats, it uses its aggression for that top layer, and then when I swirl, it evens the saturation out, all right? So I'm gonna be having a divot in my bed, I'm gonna pour from a height so it splinters before it hits the, the coffee, and hopefully it'll pull up without much going through, and then with the swirl, water should start seeping through, and it should give us a really nice full saturation for two minutes. Then with my second pour, 
I'm going to start from high up and I'm going to have it so that the pour breaks up right as it's hitting the water. This will give us the most turbulence, the deepest turbulence, and give us a lot of agitation for the initial part. I'm going to pour with a fast flow rate and fill it up to about halfway from top to bottom. Obviously halfway is not half the volume because as it gets taller, it goes out. So we're going to pour halfway at that speed, right about there, okay? And then we're going to slow up, get closer to the slurry, and we're just going to do small circles all right, until we reach full weight. Now you're gonna notice as you're pouring if you have enough room to finish your pour. And so you need to just using, you know, using common sense and looking if you have if you have this much room left and you have 200 grams left of water, you're gonna need to slow down a lot so you can fit it all in before you're done with your pour. Now again, the reason for this is we're trying to epitomize the temperature of our slurry to increase extraction because of course with a two pour uh, with a two pour brew, you want to be able to manipulate the variables you can control to epitomize that extraction. But also, we want it to be at the very top by the end of the pour so that we're utilizing all of the filter because we want to filter out as many fines as possible. If we only use this much of the filter, there's this much real estate that could be absorbing fines. So, in order to lessen the idea of a clog and in order to trap as many fines as possible, we're going to pour all the way up to the very tippy tip top. All right? Okay, enough talking. I'm going to go and show you all this. And I'm going to set it all up. And when I clap, it's going to be set up and I'm going to start pouring right now. Okay, so that was a weird thing, okay. So first thing I did is I put my filter in and I'm gonna go ahead and advocate for my favorite filters, Kopec Medium Roast. Now, uh, these are my favorite um, and ob objectively, if you, if you look in that book I linked below from Gagne, he has microscopic images. These also just perform really, really well. They perform up there with like Sybarist as far as the flow and uh, ability to absorb fines, but they're, uh, um, uh, they're cheaper and they're a little thinner. Um, anyway, I absolutely love the medium roast from Kafek. Wonderful. Oh, they're great. Cool. So what I did is I put it in my flour and then I blast it under the sink. And the reason for that is to get it stuck into as many ridges as possible because we're using those ridges to catch the fines. All right. Same thing with either of these. All right. So I blast it with that water. Now what I'm going to be doing is I ground on a five and a half on the Easy Press OK Plus. So I'm going to take my grounds. I'm using 18 grams of coffee to, and this is a personal choice, but I'm doing 18 grams of coffee to 306 grams of water. That's a one to 17. I like one to 17 ratios. You can do less. It doesn't really matter what ratio you're wanting to use. Uh, the idea here is that we are getting these fines trapped up. Now, as far as, ro uh, as far as grind size, I'm going on the more like medium, medium fine. It's hard to really describe. Um, we'll do a close up shot for you. I'll put some in my hand so you can kind of see. So that's what I'm working with as far as grind size. Now I'm going to take a stick. I like to do loose divots. So I'm just going to do a loose divot right in the center. Boom. All right. So loose divot. All right. So I do just a loose divot. I start by circle on the outside going in. This is just going to help me get water to the bottom a little more quickly. Anyway, so I like to put the handle over here so I don't tap it, tippy tap it. All right, so I'm using boiling water. I like, I'm using a really lightly roasted coffee from George Hal, a Kenya coffee. It's really, really tasty. So I'm gonna start my brew. First thing I'm gonna do, going to do, start my timer. Pour from high up so it spatters, as you see, or here. And I'm doing three times. There we go, we're at 54. I'm replacing the kettle on that. I'm swirling aggressively. The swirl here is to ensure there's no clumps in there. So if you're swirling and you see clumps down below, keep swirling. If you see thick parts of it up against the wall, keep swirling, all right? Since it's a two pour brew right now, you can be really aggressive during this initial swirl and you shouldn't worry about stalling. So I did my 54 gram bloom and I'm waiting until two minutes. Then what I'm going to do again, is I'm gonna pour it really heavily from pretty high up until we get about just below where you see through the filter, you see where the coffee grounds hit from my swirl, just below that. I'm gonna fill aggressively till then, and I'm gonna slow up drastically and kind of just pour in a circle. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna get our slurry in an absolute frenzy. It's going to really increase the temperature really quickly. I have my kettle back on, the, back on its uh, base, getting back to boiling. I want it to be as hot as possible. Since this is a two pour brew and it's gonna drain pretty quickly, I'm, again, I'm trying to manipulate all those variables to give me as high of an extraction as possible because we're gonna lose out on a lot of that with less pours and, and, and all that jazz. So 
Here we go, we're gonna wait, we're at 115. And then at the very end, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what I'm gonna do. At the very end, once it's at the very, when it, once, once, once we're finished and I've poured to 306 exactly, I'm gonna take a stir stick of some sort, a chopping stick, or you can take the backside of a spoon. I just would not use a spoon that's actually gonna grab and stir aggressively. And I'm gonna just gently stir the very top layer. I know that sounds weird referring to water as layers, but I'm gonna take the very top and just dip just a little bit of this stick into it. I'm just gonna swirl, not aggressively, but just enough to get a little motion, and that's gonna push those fines into the sides of the walls. And on top of that, it's not gonna allow boulders or bigger coffee grounds to get stuck. So you're gonna get rid of any high and dry, and you're gonna be able to get those fines removed from the brew. So here we go, I'm gonna come in heavy, and boom. Heavy, with just a small little circle, and now we're there, I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna slow it up. I'm going all the way up to 306. And again, this pour is scalable to whatever, uh, whatever dose you're wanting to do. All right, so we're almost up at the top. And we're at 306. So I didn't quite reach the top because this is a smaller dose for this big brewer, but I'm gonna take it. I'm just gonna kind of stir just like so. And we have a little motion going on. Then what I like to do to ensure we maintain a flat bed is I'm gonna give it a little swirl as well. Not much, it's more so feeling it out so I can flatten that bed, all right? So I'm gonna make sure I get that motion back in, but I don't want a dome to, to occur. If there's a dome, we're gonna over extract the edges. So you can also kind of shake in between your little stirs. You just wanna make sure that bed is nice and flat. Do a little stir, and then do a little shaky shake, a little shake and bake, just to ensure we have a flat bed. So I know you're looking at this and you're like, you're crazy, this is so much agitation. But I'm just trying to use that filter to take out the fines, and I'm trying to make sure we have that nice flat bed so we know that water went through pretty evenly. So just very shallow stirs. As it keeps draining down, I'm making sure that I have consistent output of fines on the walls, just small little circles. And then as you can see the bed, if you do see a dome at all, make sure that you are shaking it back flat. All right, we don't want that dome. And then when, when it gets to the very bottom, just kind of some finishing touches and we should be good to go. The final brew time right here is, is about 345. And I just like to keep shaking it. We're just making sure that it's nice and flat. We want that bottom bed, we want that nice and flat. Perfect. All right, so now I'm gonna show you, that was at 350. So we did a two minute bloom, then it was a minute and 50 seconds for the full pour and for it to all drain out. Now I'm gonna show you how many fines we caught on that wall. Okay, so as you see, look at all these fines. Look at all that. That's all been removed from the brewing process, all right? You see how dry that bed is and how flat it is? So that's what we were able to do. We were able to take these fines out from the rest of the process. And on top of all that, not only are we removing the fines, because it's arguable if just that few 20 seconds will really affect much, um, it's arguable, I can't prove it. But what it does for sure is it's gonna help you not clog. So if you do have a grinder that tends to clog when you do higher agitation V60s, brewing like this is going to help you minimize that clogging. It's gonna take the fines and it's gonna remove a lot of them and put them on top. So it may put them on top of the bed and the walls if you produce a lot of fines, or you'll catch most of them like with this Easy Press OK Plus, you're gonna catch a lot of them in the actual ribs. Now what we're going to do, of course, is we're gonna pour out this beverage and we're gonna enjoy it. So I'm gonna measure the refractometry real quick. So I'm trying to make sure I get all my beverage weighed out. Just do some taps, make sure anything left in there is out. I'm gonna transfer it to my lovely, lovely cup and we're gonna, we're gonna measure. I'm gonna put that there for now. Oop. All right, so let's zero this out. And of course I'm using my Magnolia Mountain Cups. Shout out, if you, if you are one of the people who ordered one of these, drop below that you have one. I would love to see who all has one. Um, I'm stoked on these. Anyway, put that there and we're gonna measure the beverage weight. All right, we're at 269.5. All righty and I'm gonna measure it right now. All right, so I just measured the refraction. We're at 1.49 TDS. So that with a 269.5 beverage weight times 1.49 divided by my 18 gram dose, that's a 22.3% extraction yield. So that is quite high. Incredible. We were able to do that in three minutes and 50 seconds and that's including a two minute bloom. And again, everything I'm doing in this is to epitomize extraction because this brew is not built for high extraction. So I'm trying to 
uh, straddle this, this line, this fine line of getting as much clarity and sweetness and, and juiciness out of the coffee without going too hard regardless of the grinder that you own. So give this a try. Let me know below what you think about it. Let me see if you're on Instagram. Tag me and put photos of your beds with, with, the, with the finds caught in it. I would love to see those repost it in my story. Anyway, again, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. I hope that it really, you know, elevates your game at home. Delicious. I love when there's a blackberry note in Kenya Coffees and this one has it. And it's just, mm, it's delish. Okay, cool. So I hope you all brew something tasty today. Um, cheers.